Welcome to the weekend news update on the News at Rider. The top stories of the weekend are Sweetheart Weekend, Bronk Bingo, and the Starbucks Live Music Series. Welcome to the Weekend News Update. I'm Steph Chartel. Today is Monday, September 17th, and in the past week, students have started to get comfortable within their new settings. This past weekend was filled with events and information sessions to keep everyone entertained. On Thursday night, there was a movie shown in the Bart Ludicky Center, led by the Student Entertainment Council. They showed Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at World's End. This movie continued to play through Sunday evening. Next week's movie is Knocked Up. The pub was open for business and had a special brew and view event. This event is just one of the many that the pub has planned for this year. Some others include Monday, September 17th, Dude's Night Out, Redskins at Eagles, Thursday, September 20th, Welcome to Mayberry Night, and Friday, September 21st, Bronc Blowout Dance Party. The Black Student Union also held a meeting to discuss upcoming events on its calendar in the new residence hall meeting room. More meetings will follow on Thursdays at 10 p.m. Friday started out with a boom at 1 p.m. The Student Recreation Center was holding group exercise classes and they did not stop until later in the night. From 1 to 1.25 p.m., ab session. From 5.15 to 5.55, Freestyle Friday. And from 10 to 10.45 p.m., TNT Track and Train. Each of the workouts will be led by professionals and the SRC will work with you to make sure that you hit your personal goals of fitness. This past Friday was also the deadline for the intramural sports signups. Garrett Williams was there to get the inside loop on the sign-up process. With all the academic stress and the start of the fall semester, Rider University students will finally get a chance to release some of that stress and also get a chance to play recreational sports. Actually, the, the whole week was set up for the intramural sign-up, uh, pretty much um, for the individual sports like tennis and, and the Madden tournament. They can just bring a, uh, the sign-up sheet to our office and we'll take care of it from there and set it up with uh, giving them an email and with the rules and whatnot. Um, uh, the captain, more or less, would be just... Uh, tends to be the more organized person. It's uh, a contact between his team and his or her team and our office. Uh, they'd be responsible for going to the captain's meeting, which, uh, which in this case is Tuesday. I caught up with one of the captains, and this is what well, he had to say. How do you say. think that your uh, team's going to do this year? I think, we'll do re I think we'll do very well, especially in soccer. I think we have a very good chance. What kind of preparations have you guys done so far? We've had a few practices. Um, we're going to continue to just try to get out as much as we can, as much as our schedules will allow. Okay, so uh, can you predict any championships this year? We'll do our best. This is Garrett Williams reporting from the SRC, Channel 20, News at Rider. Every semester, a new set of sports will be available for students to sign up for. Just head to the Rider Recreation Center website to keep up with the upcoming events. An international wine tasting occurred in the Bart Ludicky Center on Friday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Students got a chance to try and taste different wines that many of them might not have had the opportunity of consuming if not for the people from Campus Life who ran the event. This past weekend, the Greek community celebrated one of its most anticipated holidays of the year, Sweetheart Weekend. With more on Friday's nomination ceremony, here is Matt Semmel. Today is the start of a two-day celebration in which fraternities and sororities choose their sweethearts. The process of choosing a house's sweetheart begins with nominations which took place Friday night. The nomination ceremony began on Friday with each of the fraternities chanting and marching to each of the sorority houses. Once they arrive, each fraternity will call out their nominees to accept their nominations. The sororities then will do the same ritual. Nomination is a great privilege and a great honor. Um, I know this is my senior year. I got nominated by another house last year. Um, it really is a true honor. It shows a sign of gratitude. Um, you mean something to the house, the house means something to you. This tradition has been going on for at least 10 years, according to Director of Greek Life, Ada Badgley. The tradition of selecting someone who's very important to the chapter, uh, who is a, a, a special individual who they select to um, 
more or less be part of their chapter for the year, uh, I think is, is really nice. I think that it makes that person feel very special, very loved and wanted by that organization, and I think that um, it, it's, in general, a really excellent thing to do. I think that there are some hurt feelings from time to time from the folks who don't get selected, and I wish that there was some way where we could um, change that aspect of it. This year's celebration is a bit different because the Greek community is adjusting to the new alcohol policy. Sweetheart Weekend itself, um, the, the events that the school hosts, which are the Friday night um, nomination event and the Saturday afternoon selections and picnic, have actually not changed at all. The timing is a little bit earlier on Friday night, um, but in general those events are the same. The differences are in the way that the chapter is approaching the weekend. Um, we obviously don't have parties in the houses anymore, so the parties that used, used to happen on Friday night and on Saturday night are no longer happening. This is Matt Semmel reporting from in front of University House for Channel 20 News at Rider. Stay tuned in for more on how Sweetheart Weekend turned out after nominations, coming up later in our program. It wasn't just any ordinary night at Daly's Dining Hall. On Friday night, students gathered around tables not to enjoy their daily meals, but instead to compete for various prizes in a fun-filled game of bingo. Here's Gina Grasso with the story. The night quickly got started as students compiled into the dining hall awaiting for Michelle to call the numbers. Before the game had begun, I had the opportunity to find out the real reason for the students' attendance. Uh, it's, it's the Wii. The Wii? Come on, I think everybody here is for the Wii. I just must have it. If I have it, nobody else is going to have it. The kids were so excited to play bingo that even Dean Campbell had a comment. Well, I, I, I love to see everybody here and everybody working. And what I really hope is that if we keep growing and growing. And what's really nice about this is students are getting together, they're getting a place to talk to each other, meet new people, especially the first year students. So I'm really pleased that everybody's getting involved. Uh, everything's pretty good. It's a great experience being around everybody and getting a chance to enjoy the rider experience. Yes, I'm having fun. Um, it's a great experience just to get everyone out and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's a good, it's a nice thing to mix up my night. As you can see, tonight's Bronx Bingo was clearly a success. With over 300 participants, we have run out of Bronx Bingo cards. Uh, tonight, we came to see uh, Bronx Bingo, and unfortunately, when I got here, all the cards were taken up, so I'm waiting my turn before uh, I get a chance to play. Michelle gave us the details if you're interested in winning more great prizes like these. Yeah, um, the next Bronx Bingo is in early October. I'm not quite sure of the date, but um, it's going to be kind of like a Halloween, autumn type feel. I haven't decided the grand prize yet, but it's going to be something really great, I hope. Once the game had come to an end, students slowly exited the dining hall as the winner danced with joy. This is Gina Grass reporting from Daly's Dining Hall for Channel 20 News at Ryder. If you are interested in winning various prizes, Daly's Dining Hall will be hosting bingo nights throughout the next upcoming weeks. For more information, check out the upcoming events on Ryder's website. A group of students were taken to the Delaware River Water Gap. The trip left at 8.30 a.m. to head for the location. Once there, all the students piled into whitewater rafts to head down the Delaware River. The Recreation Programs Association ran this event and plans on doing more things like this in the future if more input is given to them. The Student Entertainment Council provided a bus to transport students to Atlantic City for the day. The bus departed for Atlantic City from the BLC at 9 a.m. The bus left Atlantic City at 8 p.m. Saturday night. There were no scheduled shows to attend and students were free to do as they please. Many students still did see shows, walked the boardwalk, and spent money frivolously in the casinos. Saturday morning was filled with anxiousness because the actual celebration of Sweetheart Weekend was to commence. The day culminated by each chapter finally rounding up and naming their sweethearts. Brian Persons was there to cover the event. Not too long ago, the CVT lawn was filled with Greeks in anticipation for Sweetheart Weekend. We've been actually talking about Sweetheart Weekend for, um, I'd say, a, a few months now. Um, in lieu of the recent events, you know, a lot of things have been happening on Ryder that are going to change a lot of the things like the, I guess say, the ceremonial aspects of Greek life. Each of the eight fraternities and sororities took place in the sweetheart tradition of running into the middle of the circle, chanting, then running towards a prospective sweetheart and lettering them. Overall, I think today was a huge success, and I'm, I'm really pleased at the way that people handle themselves and uh, the way that the events uh, turned out to be. 
IFC and Panhel, along with IGC, we all work to, together to make sure that we are starting to shed the Greek life stereotype to the point where we want to show the, the positive aspects of the Greek life because we feel like it's shrouded by negative aspects. So we've sat through week-long meetings and discussions to the point to really get across the point of Greek life instead of being drowned in the as alcohol aspect. Some of the Greek leaders explained why they like the alcohol policy. I believe that now I'm, I'm for the alcohol policy because I believe that it, it proves the stereotypes wrong that we face and just the fact that we're able to withstand like our, the change of our culture shows how much the letters mean to us and that it's something that really is starting, you're, we're starting to see positive effects throughout the campus. Basically, we're all just trying to, you know, just be good, not have any problems this semester, next semester. We just all want to have a good time here and just be safe as possible. And basically, we're just trying to follow the rules and have a good time too. And that I think is really important. Well, because we did so successful today, I'm, I'm very uh, optimistic uh, for bid day. Um, you know, like anything else, things are going to change. You know, um, you just got to accept the change and um, just kind of take it as it comes. Um, People just got to realize that it's not going to be like it always has been, and um, when, that, when people, the faster they come to that realization, I think the better off we'll be. This has been Brian Persons from Sweet Art Weekend for Channel 20 News at Ryder. More Greek holidays are heading to Ryder's campus like Bid Day on October 6th. Stay tuned with the News at Ryder to hear more about these events. At 12 p.m. on Saturday, students were able to learn how to get to Princeton and about all of the great shopping and dining opportunities that come along with this historic town. The program was capped off with free ice cream. Also through Campus Life, a weekly shuttle is available. It makes stops at the Lawrenceville campus, the Princeton campus, Princeton train station, Princeton Market Fair, Walmart Shopping Center, Mercer Mall, and Quaker Bridge Mall. Pick up schedules from the BLC Information Desk or the Associate Dean's Office on the Princeton campus if you want more information. The Student Rec Center is not just a place for students to go and work out, but also a place to go and relax with a hot cup of coffee. Thanks to the new Starbucks on campus, students now have the opportunity to relish themselves in the new music scene. Here's Gina Grasso with the details. Every Saturday for the next few months, Starbucks Coffee House will be featuring new upcoming artists. This past Saturday, we were lucky enough for Simple Life to grace us with their presence. We do anything from this kind of coffee house, coffee house style um, to big festivals in the summer, um, to big college shows, bars, clubs, What's everything. Uh, it, we've definitely pushed more into like a rock uh, band than the, the first album that we put out was more uh, acoustic driven. Um, I mean we still had drums and bass and, and I played a lot of electric guitars there but the newer one uh, has a little bit heavier guitars, a little bit more groove oriented, uh, similar to like a, a, a Maroon 5 sound kind of where the first album was compared to like a John Mayer sort of sound. So um, it's, it's a lot more energetic and, and, it, and it's, it's, got, it's got a lot of excitement to it. I think so. Unfortunately, not many people showed for the performance. I found out about it about 15 minutes ago. We saw a flyer for it walking out of the BLC. We have new posters. We're getting new signs to put out. Um, it's a new series, so there's not a lot out there just yet. This is a brand new thing for Ryder, so we're just trying to feel it out. Despite the small crowd, it seemed that many of the students enjoyed themselves at the performance. Yeah, it's really nice. They're really good. I like it a lot. I like, yeah. For the Saturday yeah, actually the music is really good. We have the talent and basically I think that if people are, keep showing up, whether that be 10 people or 35, it's still worth the money, I think. It's a shame that not many people showed for this spectacular event. In order to keep Starbucks Music Series alive, we will need a greater crowd at the next show. This is Gina Grasser reporting from the Rec Center for Channel 20 News at Ryder. Next time you're looking for something to do, go to rider.edu and check out current students, upcoming events, to see who will be playing next. It's sure to be a great time for everyone. On Sunday, the Human Resources Office planned a heart walk from 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. This walk started after a program that was implanted by the University Healthy You. This program is a way to guide and inform our community on ways to live a healthier lifestyle. As part of this program, Ryder University has partnered with the American Heart Association to participate in the 2007 Mercer County Heart Walk. The event was held at Mercer County Park in West Windsor, New Jersey, and had two routes of one and three miles each. 
A three-on-three -three basketball tournament was held outside the SRC on the basketball courts behind the Bronx Zoo. Teams eager to see if they would be the champions of the courts filled the event. Garrett Williams has more. Sunday morning, behind the Bronx Zoo, the Delta Sigma Theta sorority held their annual three-on-three -three basketball tournament. I had the opportunity to speak with the chapter president of the sorority, Shauna Parker. But it's a lot of fun, and it's good to see it go off successfully, like today. You have to you have to get the teams together and make sure they're really going to commit. They have to pay ten dollars a person, so it's thirty dollars for three people on a team and forty for four. And you know how people back out a lot. And then you have to get the venue, make sure Dave Keenan signs off on everything, balls, drinks. It's it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun, and it's good to see it go off successfully, like today. The money actually goes to our chapter. This is like our biggest fundraiser and it's our kickoff event for the year. But other funds go to whatever charity that we feel like helping at the time. I also had the opportunity to speak with one of the players of the winning team. We've been in this tournament. This is our second time in this tournament. We pretty much know the competition. They, I think they added about two new teams this year. Um, you know, we just had to basically fill them out. And then you know, when we played them the second time, you know, we basically adjusted. And then, you know, with them, our strong men. Shona then talked about the sorority's upcoming event. I event. have like a presidential debate about the election with professors on the campus. And then December, we'll kick it off real big for Deltas. Delta Week's December 2nd through the 7th. And then Crimson and Cream pageant is on the 8th. So everyone should come out. It's a lot of fun. Reporting from behind the Bronx Zoo, this is Garrett Williams, Channel 20, News at Rider. Along with just having fun and playing sports to raise money, Ryder also was busy this weekend at home fighting it out in many sporting events. I had the opportunity to see the games in action and catch some of the highlights. Push up! This past Friday, the Lady Bronx of the Ryder soccer team were able to maintain their undefeated record for the season as they tied the Lady Dragons of Drexel University. Both teams played an aggressive game, each making saves left and right. Ryder fans of all sorts filled the bleachers and sidelines to support the ladies in a compelling game that went into double overtime. Ryder's tennis team had their first matchup of the season on Saturday the 15th as they hosted the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Throughout the afternoon, exciting matches filled all six courts. The Ryder men took a win 4-3 while the Highlanders defeated the ladies' side 6-1. The men's next match is scheduled for Wednesday against Marist, and the Lady Bronx will return to the court on Thursday facing Monmouth. Each will be held at home. The women's soccer record didn't read undefeated for long. Sunday afternoon ended the streak as the ladies lost to Towson 2-0. Head coach Kevin Long believed his girls didn't play with enough energy as they should have. The Towson Tigers defeated the Bronx for the third time within their past three matchups together. Unfortunately for Ryder, their loss to Towson was their first in nine games. The ladies will play at Monmouth on Friday the 21st. From the weekend news update, we would like to give you a five-day weather forecast so you, the viewers, know how to dress from day to day. On Monday, it's supposed to be sunny with a high of 71. Tuesday, sunny with a high of 73. Wednesday, sunny with a high of 79. Thursday, sunny with a high of 83. And on Friday, sunny with a high of 80. So it looks like the week should be pretty nice. Make sure you dress to impress, but be cool as well. This has been the weekend news update on the News at Rider. For the Rider University Network, I'm Steph Chartel. Have a great week.